بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى كل من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزنا علما سبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا بإنسك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه وبعد Respect your brothers and also your sisters this name Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Today's topic which is advertised as improving relationships A general topic and inshallah in the next half hour of which five minutes I'll try to talk about this topic Improving relationships, what does it mean? We are talking about this in a general sense. Relationships, starting from the family, starting from the husband-wife relationship, parents-children relationship, siblings relationship, the family relationship, relatives, the extended family, the cousins, the relatives, and then more general relationships between Muslim communities and Muslims, and then our relationship with non-Muslims. In an overall sense, this branch of the teachings of Islam, which relates to interaction and relationship with others, this is actually a whole branch of the teachings of Islam. It's a whole branch. It's called the branch of Mu'asha. Mu'asha is from the word Ishara. Ishara means to live. See, we human beings, we are social beings. A human being is a social animal. We, we, are, we don't live in a desert. There could be one possibility, one scenario could have been that we just live in a desert, we live in a... Maybe Australia is a desert. We live in a jungle of mountains and there's nobody there. That's just me, myself, and I in this massive jungle. Nobody to get upset with, and nobody to hurt my feelings, and nobody's feelings to hurt, and nobody, nobody to fight with, nobody to argue with. No big deal. Imagine someone's in a jungle and says, Alhamdulillah, I, I don't fight with anybody. Who is there to fight with? The sand? It's like a blind man saying, you know what, I've never ever committed a sin with my eyes. There's no big deal, because it's not even possible to commit a sin with your eyes. So that's one scenario where someone lives on their own, just does not intermingle with anyone. But that's not possible. Human beings, we, we can't live without each other and we can't live with each other. We can't live without each other, we need each other. We need the company of other human beings. Men need women, women need men, but then they fight with one another as well. This is the test and the challenge that we need one another. And when we live with one another, then the challenge and the test is how we deal with the difficulties involved in living with one another. And this is taken directly from the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's a famous hadith in the Sunan of Imam Tirmidhi. When the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he explained this very concept, Al-Muslimu al-ladhi yukhalitu al-nas. Al-Muslimu al-ladhi yukhalitu al-nas wa yasbir ala adahum khayru min al-Muslim al-ladhi la yukhalitu al-nas wa la yasbir ala adahum. Amazing. Every hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so deep, so profound. Al-Muslimu al-ladhi yukhalitu al-nas. That Muslim who yukharit, what does that mean? Intermingles, mixes with people, communicates, socializes, yukharitun nas with people. Wayasbir ala adha. And then exercises sabr, patience, on the harms received from the other human beings. The Messenger of Allah didn't say. A Muslim who intermingles, and then if he, do you understand my point? He didn't say what? Listen to this carefully. 
a Muslim who intermingles with other human beings and that if he receives, he didn't say if, if he receives any harms, no. What did he say? And he receives. The hadith carries on, I'm going to complete it. What, what is it, what is this trying to say? That if you live with people, then 100% you will have your feelings hurt. This is not an if, this is a given, guaranteed. A Muslim who yukhalit, who interacts, who intermingles, who mixes, who communicates, who socializes, who has dealings with other human beings, monetary dealings, financial dealings, any kind of dealings, yukhalitul nas, and therefore as a consequence it's a given that your feelings will be hurt. There's not a, this is not a question of if, this is definite. So when he does have his feelings or her feelings hurt, this Muslim, if he exercises sabr, patience, Muslim, he is better than another believer, La nas wa la Better than another believer who does not intermingle, the one who lives in a desert, who doesn't mix who doesn't communicate, and therefore that person lies with Allah, he doesn't have to exercise any suffering. In other words, any human who lives with other human beings, it is a given that your feelings will be hurt. Why? Because human beings are all different. We all think differently. We all have different ideas. We all have different concepts. We come to the masjid, there's hundred opinions, as many as hundred people there, as many opinions in the world, as many people, because everyone's brain's different. Everyone's mental, mental level is different. Everyone's different psychologically, mentally, emotionally. And in marriage, even the gender is different. Oh, we'll finish. <laughs> Today we have to add that close. In marriage, even the gender is different. The man is from where? Mars. <laughs> the woman is from Venus. Completely different emotionally, psychologically, physically, mentally, from all different angles. Women, the way their nature is different. That's the name of a book, which is written by a non Muslim, but according to Islam as well, man, there's so many texts that inform us that the men and women are different. The hadith about Al Mar'atu Khulifat min Dila'in. The meaning of that is. That from a man's perspective, the woman is different. The man finds the woman very sensitive, very emotional. Sometimes the husband asks the wife, Why are you crying? I don't know. She won't know herself why she's crying. But a woman will understand, Yeah, 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 crying. She'll tell a friend that I'm crying for no reason. Her friend will start crying as well. Because they relate to one another, they understand one another. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're laughing at this, but they're probably crying. There's nothing wrong. This is the nature of the woman. Gentle, fragile, emotional. The man is different. Psychologically, emotionally, physically. From all angles, the man is different to the woman. Men and women are completely different. Every human is different to another. Even our fingerprints are different. We all look differently. Our brain levels. And that's why sometimes when there's arguments and debates, just think. I always say to people, one of the ways of remedies, ilaj, to treat ourselves with this is just think that the other person, I think you're excused or the other person is excused. Ma'adhur. Just say, hey, it's okay. It's from, from your angle, they're ma'adhur, and from their angle, you're ma'adhur. Ma'adhur means you're excused. You know, how you can you translate that? Then you've got a disability or something. You're excused. So from their angle, you are because you're different. You, the levels, mental levels are different. And they just move on. You are not, it's not going to be possible. You just have to do sabr. You know, sometimes people are different age levels, different mental levels, maturity levels. If someone's driving a car and you see someone raging and there's a fight or an argument outside, that person 
doesn't have you woke up in the morning, had a scenario at home, you've had a different scenario, they're thinking somewhere else, they're in a different level of brain, they're thinking about something else, they're going somewhere else to work, you're thinking about going to the airport, everyone's level is different. So anyway, this hadith is saying that when human beings interact and intermingle, then it is a must that feelings will be hurt. Therefore, there's only one solution. Well, there's another solution, which is not the solution that we should take. One solution, solution could be that because your feelings are hurt, then fight, argue, retaliate, get their feelings hurt, and debate, and get into a quarrel, and in a dispute, and have a conflict, and, 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 and it will carry on. No benefit. What's that going to do? It's going to waste your time, your energy, your effort, make you depressed, make them depressed. It's just fighting, arguing. Just... That's what animals do. That's what animals do. Have you seen the two cats fighting? Ever? Doing meow in the middle of the night? Human beings don't do that. And these are all things when we act upon them. This whole branch, as I started, I'll come back to that, the branch of Islam or Asha. But that's one solution. Just keep on never ending. Sometimes some disputes are never ending soap operas. Family disputes. I don't know how it is here. But generally, in our communities, she said this, and he said this, and then the next scenario, and then the next episode, and episode four, and episode five, and episode six, and then the daughter in law and then the mother in law and then the grandma and then this is involved and that's involved and she's involved and he's involved and then this one and it's just continuously just a life of misery and misery and just fighting the other. What's the benefit? That's one solution. This hadith is saying the solution, the other one is yes will. So that's it. That doesn't mean someone that you get your rights violated, and there's someone punching you and hitting you, and still I'm doing sabr and patience, keep on hitting. No, you don't tell the other teach in the cheek. You know, in the Sharia of Isa, alayhi salam, what those turn the other cheek? Someone slaps you one, slap me again. In Musa, alayhi salam, Sharia, someone slaps you one, you slap them twice, back. In our Sharia, is what? In aqatum, fa aqibu bi mithli ma aqibtum bi. وَلَئِنْ صَبَرْتُمْ لَهُ خَيْرُ لِلصَّابِرِ If you do sabr, and if it's not really like infringing upon your rights, then just to diffuse the situation, the greatest power, the greatest power that a Muslim has is sabr. It's super powerful. Someone said something, so sabr. Just in from one ear and out from the same ear. Forget even that you come out from this ear. It's out from the same ear. And that's why some of it's so much reward. Allah says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ The reward of sabr is without any reckoning, without any end. The Quran says, وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةَ الْوَحَرِينَ The reward of sabr is jannah. Sabr is, it's a super powerful, even some non-Muslims, they, they actually go for, for practice, you know, they get proper treatment where people exercise and go through training methods of doing sabr. If someone hurts your feelings, if someone says something to you, if someone does something to you, how do you exercise, how do you control, how do you have the willpower, how do, how do you control your anger? You know, anger management treatment, for example, that's a treatment, psychological treatment. We have all the treatment in our deen, in the Quran and Sunnah. <coughs> the sabr is really, really powerful, really powerful. It requires time, effort, tamreen, mashq, training. Sabr is amazing. Just a lot of sabr. You know, just remember there's a, there's a poet who says, that we should do so much sabr, someone, this one person did so much sabr, you know, you know sabr, patience. 
Sadara Sadra, this is an expression in Arabic, this is really nice. Sadara Sadra, Fastagata Bihi Sadra. Sadara Sadra, Fastagata Bihi Sadra. Bakaya Sadra, Ya Sadra Sadra. A person exercised so much, so much patience and sabr to the point that istaghatha bihi sabr sabr itself sought help from the person who was doing so much sabr Come on, how much are you going to use me? Sabr al-sabr fastaghatha bihi sabr Sabr was, come on, enough, and I need help was started complaining, you're using me so much faqala sabr the person who was doing sabr said to sabr, Oh sabr, no, now you tend to do sabr. Faqala sabru, faqala saburu, the sabur, the patient person said, Ya sabru, oh sabr, sabra, do sabr. So this is the level of sabr. So this is the only second option. The second option, and this is the only option. When we are human beings, Social beings, we live with one another, our feelings will be hurt. And this is the whole branch, and this is how I started in my talk, the branch of Islam which deals with interhuman communications. This is called what branch? Mu'asha. It's a whole branch. Islam is not just about ibadat, it's not just about performing salah or zakat or hajj umrah all of ibadat is actually only one branch, one quarter from the teachings of Islam offering salah, zakat, hajj, umrah, tahajjud, dhikr, tasbih, istighfar, qiyam al-layl, wabid, ishraq, dhikr all of that is one quarter one quarter from the four quarters. And if you put aqai, then one fifth from five fifths. We have different branches of the teachings of Islam. Ibadat is external worship. It's important, but it's one quarter. Then you have another branch, which is this one, Mu'asha. Social laws, social ahkam. Then you have another third and fourth. What's the third and fourth? Mu'amalat. Mu'amalat means financial dealings, business dealings, monetary dealings, money matters. Money matters. Money matters? Money matters. It matters a lot. Money matters, many issues. That's a whole branch. Where we get our money from, where we spend our money. How do we acquire it? We don't even need to go in there because that requires 25 hours or something. That's a whole branch. And then you have another final branch, which is the branch of what we call akhlaq, or we call taskeet al qalb. I don't like to use the word akhlaq because when, people, when we use the word akhlaq, people misunderstand this term, this branch. Because akhlaq is also used in other than Arabic. And when we use it in some other languages like Urdu or you know, some other languages, then people think good manners. It doesn't mean good manners. It's, it's a whole branch. It's purification of the heart and soul and working on the characteristics of the inner self. In other words, distinguishing ourselves from being an animal, being a human. That's the skirt of qalb. Because we have, and this is connected, this last branch, the skirt of al is connected to this Mu'ashara branch. It has a direct impact. And actually it has connection to even Mu'amalat, business transactions. This purification of the heart and the soul, basically the summary of that branch is that we, by nature, we've been created with for a hikmah, for a reason, for a wisdom that Allah knows best, and also because there's a, there's a need for it as well to an extent, with certain negative character traits, like anger. There's a need for it. Anger, jealousy, hatred, enmity, competition, showing off, ostentation, pride, arrogance. These are all blameworthy. 
We call them akhlaq al-radila, blameworthy character traits. These are all haram traits, by the way. Opposite of all of these are praiseworthy character traits. Humility, humbleness, ikhlas, being sincere for the sake of Allah, and, and, and this, all these praiseworthy character traits. Now, a lot of people don't know this, and don't realize this, that this branch, this other, I'm not even talking about Ma'asha, but this last branch is so important that just as it is fard for us to pray Isha, we pray Isha here, it's fard. It is also fard to acquire those character traits. That's also fard. To acquire sincerity, to remove pride and arrogance, to remove jealousy. Jealousy is as haram as zina is haram. Jealousy is as haram as alcohol consumption is haram. One is an external sin, one is an internal sin. Alcohol is an external sin. Zina is an external sin. Jealousy is an internal sin. Showing off and riya and pride and arrogance, internal sins. The branch of Tazkiyat al deals with internal sins. In other words, Salah is an external fault. Physically we perform Salah. And Ikhlas is an internal fault. These are faraid. It's not something that only some Muslims you know, who are really good Muslims do it. No, it's fault on every single Muslim. Tazkiyat al-Qalb. It's a lifelong process of working on, you, on ourselves. One of the objectives of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa was wa yizakihim. He came to purify us through the Sahaba and through the teachings to the next generation from internal diseases. Qadaflaha man zakkah. This is called tazkiyah. Really important branch. We must ensure we give importance to that branch as well from the teaching of Islam. And you know, really, it's basically, it's a branch, like I said, which takes a human from being an animal, distinguishes a human from being an animal. That's what that branch is about. You know, if you see animals, what do they do? They're always fighting, killing one another, eating one another, being selfish. Have you ever seen, have you, you know, you take your kids or your children sometimes to a pond or a lake or somewhere and there's, you know, ducks, you throw bread, what happens? What do they do? They fight. The big swan comes in. Chases a small one away. I always think my cousins, the small one, like they never get the bread, so we throw it right at the back. Just you know, this one, we've eaten. Move. You no, know, they won't. The big swan and duck won't let the other ones eat. They just fight. They fight for food. It's just me, 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 myself, my being selfish. We are different animals. Throw bread. Humans won't do that. We are different. We just do it more professionally. We don't do it on pieces of bread. We do it in the stock market. We do it in the big business, in the companies, in properties, in buildings. That's where we do it. It's all about competition. It's all about me, 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 myself, I. And when the going gets tough, we do it with the bread as well. When COVID hits, people were fighting with toilet bowls. When food is scarce, we do it. Animals eat one another. We don't eat one another. Physically. We eat each other in different ways. It's all about just me, 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 myself. يَأْكُلُ الْقَوِيُّ مِنْهُمَ الْضَعِيفِ In the earlier times, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the, the stronger used to eat the weak. This is it's a food chain. Now business is a food chain. Every small company or small business person is there to be swallowed by a bigger fish. Small fish, bigger fish, this fish, this fish, this fish, this fish, whale, and whatever. It goes, it's a chain. Humans are exactly the same. Selfishness. This branch, the Skiyatul Qalb, is there to teach us to not 
have animalistic traits. Akhlaq radila, this blameworthy certificates are basically animalistic traits. Becoming a human and not an animal. We were born with these things for a reason. Because there's a, to an extent, we can't eradicate. The, the objective is not to remove all of these traits completely, and that's neither possible. You can't remove completely jealousy and, you know, these things, you can't. It's just part of the nature. But you have to work on it to such an extent that it's, it's kind of like, it's, you know, you've trampled on it. It's a whole branch. But that branch has a link with this branch of Mu'ashara. Mu'ashara is relationship. Now, if you have a marriage, if the husband and wife in a marriage, they both, and this is why when I, when I teach courses on marriage and when we talk about marriage, I always put, put the emphasis on this that when a young person is looking for a spouse to get married to, probably the most important aspect to consider in marriage in a potential person is the skiyatul qalb. Are they working? Have they worked on their internal diseases? Are they working to be a human and not be an animal? That's really important. I want to see the whole course on how every single disease, this internal disease, has a direct link on the breakup of marriage. We went through like 10, 12 spiritual diseases, blameworthy character traits, whatever you want to call them, jealousy, enmity, hatred, showing off, the ostentation, pride, miserliness, how each one of them affects the man, a husband or a woman and breaks up the marriage, with examples. Each one of them directly links, is linked to the breakup of marriages. This is why Really important, those of you who are not married, and those of you who are married, don't worry, you can still work on him. It's never too late. It's, it's a lifelong process, but that's a really important aspect to consider because it has a direct link. Like, if you have a marriage, for example, husband and wife, if both of them have worked on their hearts or are working on their hearts. And one of the really important aspects is selflessness. The, the, the blameworthy, the bad character trait is selfishness. Selfishness. The opposite of that is what? Selflessness. Ethar. So the bad quality is being selfish. Just me, myself, me, myself, I, and it's just my money and my, and my comfort. And it's, it's just about me. Not thinking about anyone's comfort at all. The praise, praiseworthy, the opposite trait that we need to acquire is ithar, which the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu, the Sahaba, look at the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah talks about the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that why did he send him for? Allah mentioned certain job descriptions, and one of them he said, وَيُزَكِيهِمْ this verse has appeared in the Quran four or five places. The theme slightly different, but there's four main objectives. Maqasid al One of them was him. Allah sent Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to spiritually purify the hearts of the Sahaba. And this is why we say the Sahaba are all spiritually purified because if they weren't, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he failed in his job, So he's spiritually purified. All Sahaba, every single Sahaba, radiallahu anhu. So these companions, Allah talks about them, that they were spiritually purified. And like this quality, for example, selflessness. Allah says, خصاص. These are amazing, amazing companions. That they had this quality, character trait, this attribute of ethar. 
of selflessness to such an extent that they preferred others over them even if they had to remain hungry. What was this verse revealed? There's a couple of incidents because of which this verse was revealed. I'm sure you've heard of these stories. You know the famous story? The Ansari. When somebody came and the Messenger وسلم, said, Who can entertain his guest? Somebody said, Yes, I'll take him home. When he went home, no food. No food at home. Only one person's food to eat. He never even WhatsApped his wife and could bring some guests. The Messenger وسلم, said, Who will entertain? He took him home. I'm sure you heard the story. It's a famous story. The children were crying, they just put the children to sleep and then the lamp was on and he just mistakenly, well, he deliberately, but he pretended that he hit the lamp so the guest doesn't even realize that he's not eating. Because only one person is food. <coughs> and the food was put on the, you know, on the ma'ida and he, the lamp was there and he just hit it, pretending it's accidental. But the room went dark and the guest is eating and he's pretending he's eating as well. Well, this is amazing. Doing a favor on someone and not even letting them know of the favor. Because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nowadays we do something and we remind them after 200 years as well. That remember in 1993, one day I opened the door for you. This is also a sin. It's called Showing, uh, reminding someone of favors. There's a hadith of the Messenger of Allah who is saying, condemn this. Salatun la yanduru Allahu ilayhi bi yawm al qiyamati wa la yusakkihim. Al mannanu wa al muslimu idarahu wa al munafiqu sil'atahu bil hadith al kari. Three types of people. In one of them he said, al mannan, because that's Allah's right. The one who reminds you of favors. So this is what the Sahabi did. Another story, and I'm sure you heard of that story as well. It was a battlefield, and what happened? That the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sorry, some three. There were three companions. One of them was gasping for water. Somebody took the water, and he heard his brother saying, "I need water." So he said, "No, take it to my brother." He went to the second one. He heard the third one. He said, "No, take it to him." When he went to the third one, his last. So his soul had left, his last breath had left his body. He came back to the second one, he had departed, martyred, came to the first one, he's also returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regarding this incident as well, the Mufassirun had mentioned both of these stories. Allah said, وَيُثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنْفَسِهِ They give preference upon themselves. وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا Even if they remain hungry. So this selflessness, if you take a marriage for example, if both parties in a marriage, husband and wife enter a marriage and they both work, have worked or are working on their hearts and they are selfless. They make the marriage all about you, yourself, you and not me, myself, I. I've told the marriage course many, many times over many years and many places. People sometimes have asked me, you know, okay, this is 100 pages and we've done like set seven weeks or six weeks or eight weeks of studying the whole fiqh and spirit of marriage, etc. What would you say is a summary? A lot of people have asked this. And I've always said this, that all of this, you know, the spiritual aspect of marriage and all the teachings are there. If you want to summarize everything into one line, a prosperous marriage, and this is not just restricted to marriage, every relationship, you can apply this to. But I've said this in terms of marriage, that a prosperous marriage will be the one where each party makes that relationship all about the other person. All about the other person. A man enters a marriage not thinking about what, how good food she will cook for him, how much you know she will press his feet for him, you know, do this khidmah, that khidmah, this, everything. He doesn't think about that. He enters a marriage, I want to serve a female slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to look after her. I want to take her to Allah. I want to enter Jannah through looking after, protecting after a female slave of Allah. It's all about giving, giving, giving. And remember, if it's all about giving, you will receive anyway. Because that's the nature of human beings. You give, you will receive. 
And the wife also enters into a marriage all about serving her husband, looking after her, doing khidma, you know, being a loyal wife and companion. It's all about just giving. If the spirit is all about selflessness, automatically it's an amazing relationship. And take and that would be with every relationship. Every relationship. Whether it's a family relationship or outside the family. Outside the family. Employer, employee, take the same example. If the employer enters into a contract with the employee and thinks only about the rights of the employee, and likewise, the opposite way, a landlord and a tenant, we live in a world where everyone just thinks about their own rights, and that's a problem because it's all about, again, animalistic trait like the duck. Self, uh, selfishness, selfishness. You know that, that's what animals are. Like. You have a landlord that only thinks about the landlord world, as though they don't even know how it feels to be like a tenant. They only think about. They, it's just like you know, our brains are split. Like I only live in that world of being a landlord. I don't even know how it feels to be a tenant ever. Even though probably I was a tenant one day, a long time ago, but completely forgotten. That's how human beings are. We just, you know, a cheap creation of Allah. We could be amazing as well as we could be the opposite. A mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, classic problem of planet Earth. One of the oldest problem of this universe. I don't know how it is here. The mother-in-law only thinks about, it looks like that her brain is only there to, you know, just understand the role of being a mother-in-law. She just doesn't know how it feels to be a daughter-in-law, even though a long time ago she was a daughter-in-law, but she's forgotten, it's like she's become another species, you know, another brain, she's just forgotten. She's forgotten completely that when she was a daughter-in-law, she was arguing with her husband about her mother-in-law. But now when she's with the mother-in-law, now it's all about just her rights. Me, myself, my rights, my rights. And this daughter-in-law, she only thinks about being a daughter-in-law. She doesn't remember, and she, well, she doesn't realize that she's got a two-year-old baby. In 20 years' time, he's going to get married. And then you're going to have a daughter-in-law coming in your house. But then, then you switch, then you become the mother-in-law and you forget that you were once a daughter-in-law. This is all selfishness. Just looking at it from one angle, from just my angle, myself. Every relationship. And that's why the marital relationship, we have problems because people are just thinking about it from their angle. And this is why I said that the prosperous marriage, when people have asked what's the summary, I've always said that a good marriage will be where each party enters into the marriage with the spirit of giving. With the spirit of giving. Making it all about the other person. Making it a sadaqah. To the extent that, uh, without being explicit, but to the extent that the hadith calls intimacy sadaqah. This is a very deep and unique point. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you know, this hadith. وَفِي بُضْعِ أَحَدِكُمْ صَدَقَتُمْ Have you heard of this hadith? I'm sure you've got very intelligent. This is hadith of Bukhari. أَمْرُ الْمَعْرُوفِ صَدَقَةٌ وَنَهْيٌ عَلِ الْمُنْكَةٌ إِنَّ بِكُلِّ تَسْبِيحَةٍ صَدَقَةٌ وَكُلِّ تَهْرِيلَةٍ صَدَقَةٌ وَكُلِّ تَكْبِيرَةٍ صَدَقَةٌ وَأَمْرُ الْمَعْرُوفِ صَدَقَةٌ وَنَهْيٌ عَلِ الْمُنْكَةِ صَدَقَةٌ وَفِي بُضْعِ أَحَدِكُمْ سَلَقَةٌ The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said that one of you engaging in intimate relationship intimate relationship with your spouse that is also سَلَقَةٌ What does that mean? Even the intimacy between husband and wife should be about giving shouldn't be about yourself وَلِلْعَاقِلِ تَكْفِيهِ الْإِشَارَةِ it should be all about giving, not about self-gratification, 
Not me, 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 me. Once you go into the, even that aspect of the relationship with that spirit, there's no fights and there's no problems. It's not like, you know, emailing this sheikh and this imam and Mawlana Khalid Shah is not getting receiving, you know, calls from a, a, a man or after Jumu'ah someone's coming to, you know, my wife, you know, it's been so long and she doesn't... Uh, none of these problems. Because it's all about what? It's all about yourself. It's all about giving. All these problems will happen because everyone's just in it for themselves as animals. So this whole Mu'ashara branch I don't know how long I'm going to be I don't know if it's too long. It's today, it's Friday. No, that's it. I know. You can go ahead. I can go ahead. And you can write a title. And then I don't realize. And then after when I finish, I feel so tired. But anyway, I don't feel tired when I'm talking. I don't know what happens. Alhamdulillah. Another time. Inshallah. And also because of the people. I don't like to continue. It's not. I don't have a habit of long talks. Even I was in Sydney over the last two days. And I told them exactly, we're going to finish at this time. So people know mentally as well. This is part of the teachings of Rishan and Mu'ashad as well. That you don't just continuously talk, 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 and the people, they don't know, should I stand or should I go? Then, you know, so they, you should be mentally prepared. You know, some of the lectures outside of our oh, Masajid settings, there's a time period that this is for <coughs> lecture, is from this time to this time, we, people are prepared, if they need to do something, they'll make sure they'll do it afterwards. So we should have the same thing here, because there should be a time limit. And then there's just 10 more minutes, inshallah. So this um, Mu'asha branch, it's a really important branch of Islam. And it's connected to this branch of Tazkiyat al Every relationship we take is part of the Mu'ashara branch. And I said Mu'ashara is from the word Ishra, which is living with people. And when we live with people, we have to, we have to, we have to exercise sabr. And also, one other thing, or we can talk about a lot of things, but another thing, so I talked about the selfishness, this other thing that has a direct impact and link, a very important part of this Mu'asha and our dealings and our communications with others, is when we are fulfilling the rights, what intention do we have? Why are we doing it? This is again connected. See, this talk has become such automatically that we've connected Mu'asha with Tazkiyah. One of the tazkiyah aspects is ikhlas, sincerity, doing things for the sake of Allah. Very, very important branch of Islam, a very important teaching of Islam. You know the famous hadith, the first hadith of Bukh Sahih al-Bukhari and most books of the hadith. I'm sure you guys know which one. إِنَّمَا الْعَمَرُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Indeed, actions are according to intentions. This means that we must be sincere, ikhlas, do everything for the sake of Allah. We offer salah. For the sake of Allah. The hadith says, When salah you ra'i faqad ashraka billah. Whoever prays salah to show off committed kind of minor type of shirk. So ikhlas. Ikhlas means ikhlasun niyati. Making the niya pure. That's what it means. Ikhlas is half the word. It's ikhlasun niyati. Purifying the intention, doing something for the sake of Allah. Now that's from that branch, the fifth branch, tazkiyah. Do you remember the five, the four branches? If you say five, then it's Aqeedah, but Ibadat, worship, and then this one, Mu'ashara, Mu'amalat, financial dealings, and this is Kiyah, or Akhlaq, or anything. So here we talked about selflessness. A very important part of this branch having a direct impact on this Mu'ashara. Another very important teaching of this fourth branch is doing things for the sake of Allah, having a direct impact, direct link to this Mu'ashara. When we are nice to people, why are we being nice? When we are fulfilling the rights of our parents, why are we fulfilling the rights? Why, when, when we are good to our children, why are we good to our children? I was once driving a car and there was a car in front of me and at the back there was a big, like a sticker. Look after your children because they are going to be the ones who will choose your caring homes when you're old. Are you looking after your children because so that they look after you and your own? 
Are you giving a gift to someone because you think they will give you a return back? Are you going to somebody's wedding because then they will come to your wedding? Are you going to somebody's funeral because you want them to come to your funeral? Are you smiling at someone and it's a business smile because you want something from them? These are all questions. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, لَيْسَ الْوَاصِلُ بِالْمُكَافِ وَلَكِنَّ الْوَاصِلُ الَّذِي إِذَا قُتِعَتْ رَحِمُهُ وَصَلْهَا The one who maintains relationship ties, the one who does it as a بِالْمُكَافِ as a return or that's the right translation? Sure, sure. Right translation? He said, Wasil bin The one who maintains ties. If we are good to people as a as a return. That's not real maintaining of ties. This is a hadith in Sahih Bukhari. Laysa al Wasil bin Mukaf. Walakin al Wasil al Ladi Ida Kuti Atarahimuhu wasalaha. The real maintainer of ties is the one when others break off relationships. If others are not good to you, you are still good to them. That's what you call maintaining of ties. Because it's easy to be good to someone who's good to you. Everyone, you know, there's a famous statement. They all, everyone says this. Yeah, I'm good to the people who are good to me. Have you heard of this? They all say this. When someone treats me good, I treat them good. Good, big deal, so what? What's the big deal? If you wouldn't be doing that, you'd probably be, you know what, a super animal. Of course, that's just normal. What's the big deal? I'm good to people who are good to me. So what? I am good to people who are not good to me. That's, that's the real objective. Of course, to an extent. To an extent. Yes, everything in balance in Islam. Doesn't mean if somebody, like I said in the beginning, if someone's going to punch me and hit me and abuse me and I'm still good to them. No, Islam is not saying that. Of course, there's an extent, but in general ways. If someone doesn't call you, somebody doesn't you know, <coughs> smile at you, so what? You smile at them. Someone doesn't say salam to you, you say salam to them. Hadith says, Al Babi will be salami, but you will be kibba. The one who commences, initiates salam, is the one who's free from pride and arrogance. We initiate salam. Someone's not nice to me, I'll be nice to them. No problem. So this is this is the connection. A great example of this is why we give gifts. In Islam, when we give a gift to someone, it should be exclusively for the sake of Allah. No other motive behind it. You go to somebody's wedding, you give them a gift, do it for the sake of Allah. You invite people for walima, not because of name, not because of fame, not because of popularity, not because of image in the community. Nobody's going to write a book about your great wedding. <laughs> honestly, nobody is. Showing off, it isn't, it's, honestly, nobody cares about how big wedding you have. And I, I tell you, the younger you know, people when they get married, they don't be, you got money, Spend that on your own self. Have a smaller wedding and go with your wife for a holiday. So spend it on you. You know, the amount of money that people spend, listen to this carefully. So much money we spend for the sake of others. For the sake of others. You know what that means? For the sake of others, charity, alhamdulillah, great. Giving a gift to someone, great. So much money we spend not on others, we're spending for ourselves, but for the sake of others. You got a car, just to show off, you're spending more money on the car. It's for others. You're putting some nice idle wheels and tires just so that people, nobody's going to write a book about your idle wheels. If they praise you, what is that going to do? It's even mentally, it doesn't make a sense. What does praise do? If someone praises us, what benefit? If, if, imagine, if every time someone praised you and you got like, you know, every time someone said, you're amazing, you suddenly got $10 in your pocket. You're amazing, $10, you're amazing, $10. Then it's worthwhile. Then I'd like someone to praise me. 
But if someone praises me and is not doing nothing physically, they say it once, you're amazing, it's gone in there. Like maybe just record it. Repeat, repeat, record it and just go home and listen. Even that, what is it going to do? What difference? And someone criticizes us and there's nothing wrong with us. What is it going to do? It doesn't change anything. This ta'rif, you know, praise of the people. I've said to a lot of people, learn to be happy without others knowing about your life. Learn to be happy with your own ni'mah. You don't need anyone to praise your car, showing off with a car, or anything. Some, some people, they complain about financial, you know, that it's very difficult financial. I said to them, if we cut down on the cost and the money we spend on things which is just to show off, Half of our financial problems are this. So many things we do, there's no benefit for us in it. It's just for that, you're amazing, you've got a great car, you've got a great house, you've got a great this, you've got a great that, which doesn't do anything. There's no benefit. So when we give a gift, why are we giving that gift? The Quran says if you're giving a gift so that you get a return gift back, that's actually riba. Do not give a gift so that when some they give you a gift, they give you a better gift. That's like a transaction. Giving a gift only for the sake of Allah. I once, you know, we were going to a wedding or something, so I told my family to put money in an envelope to give it to me. You got a pen, right, right? I said, this time don't write. They put, you know, like a 20 pound whatever note into an envelope and they're going to give it to the person who's going to get married from, you know, we say from such and such. Nothing wrong. You, shall, you can write your name. They might just make dua for you. That's a good objective. You give someone a gift and you want them to know you've given it so that they make dua for you. No problem. But sometimes as a form of like um, uh, uh, training, Give a gift to sometimes to people that they don't even know you've given it. Nobody knows, only Allah knows. Nobody knows. Certain things we should do must be part of our life. Like for example, this talk of mine is not part of that because you guys are hearing me talking. We are offering salah in front of someone. That is a seamless. There must be certain things that we do, no one knows, not even our family knows. There must be some charity, something, any about it. I give a classic example that sometimes, you know, when we are driving, and I've come to the end of my talk, but when we are driving, and you know, when we drive, when there's a lot of traffic, sometimes one of those things also. If someone's, for example, and we have, you know, very small streets in some of our UK towns and cities. And you come to a traffic light or there's a busy road and you know someone's traveling and they give the flash of light, you go. There's a complete stranger letting you go. There's super ikhlas in that. Because they don't know you, you don't know them, they know that you're not going to talk about them, they're not, you're never going to see them ever in your life. Like it's just complete random. Some of them do it, they just do it because they feel good. We have this extra motive, it's for Allah. And you let them go and so you go. And that's it. It just it's so it, this is so amazing because it's there's no other object. So this is doing things for the sake of Allah, ikhlas. Giving a gift for the sake of Allah. This also has a connection. When we have this this is, this ikhlas is from this fifth category or the fourth category, directly into Mu'ashara. Being nice to your spouse, being nice to your parents, not because you want something from your parents. Don't do khidmah of your parents because you want inheritance. So many times people do things because all of them like, you know, I'll get this inheritance, or I'll get this gift, or I'll get this idea, I'll get this. Don't be good to your children because you want khidmah from them, look after you when you're in your, child, uh, in your old age. Don't be good to your wife because you want her to cook you biryani. And don't be good to your husband because you want him to take you for a holiday. 
etc., etc. Don't be good to your pastor because you want a promotion. Don't have an ulterior motive for any relationship. Do it for the sake of Allah. So that's a second point which is directly connected. And there's another three, four that are coming to my mind right now, but inshallah we'll come to the end because time is up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq and the ability to you know, have these uh, relationships, improve our relationships. Whether it's within the family, whether it's within the society, within the community, amongst ourselves. A good uh, family relationship, a good solid relationship within family members, relatives, extended families. You see, the closer we are, the greater the chance of problems. You know, we have more problems with people close to us. Because we are dealing with them more. Look at the same thing in Arabic. Al Aqarib Kal Aqarib. Al Aqarib with the Alif. Al Aqarib Kal Aqarib. Relatives are like scorpions. Not supposed to be, but it's the more close you are, the more fights. I've never you know had a random fight with you or with you or with brother there or never never because we don't talk to each other. But we have disputes and fights with people close to us. The more close they are, the greater the challenge. And going back to the beginning of the topic. We are human beings, social beings, we live with people. The more we live with people, the more it's going to you know, be a clash. Sabah, patience and working on the heart. The summary is Sabah. So, summary is all the skip to the because Sabah is also part of this branch. Sabah, Ikhlas, three things. Sabah, Ikhlas and selflessness. If we at least take this message from this talk, that there's three qualities that I really want to work on. We can do it ourselves. We don't need anyone, you know, to I mean it's good to get guidance, etc. But the basics of these things is easy, it's based, you can read books on this topic and you can start. We take this, make this intention that these three things I'm going to try my best to inculcate into my life. Number one, sabah. Number one. And number two, self. Lessness. And number three, ikhlas of niyyah. Being sincere, doing things for the sake of Allah. May Allah grant us all these qualities and these characteristics.